Hello, welcome to the Things Stack Conference. My name is Ahmed Al Salahi. Uh, I'm here to provide you with a session uh, titled A Beginner's Guide to LoRaWAN Multicast and Futa Using the Things Stack. The topics that will be covered are the following. Let's start with an introduction to LoRaWAN application layer messaging specifications. This is a very long title, but it's actually quite easy to understand. As you can see on the right hand side, the LoRa modulation and the physical layer uh, are the foundation which where we build the LoRa Mac class A and class B and class C support. Afterwards, we have the LoRaWAN specifications, and then comes the application layer. This application layer provides us with a lot of flexibility, but also can be used to provide some sort of messaging specifications, such as remote multicast setup, fragmented data block transport, or clock synchronization. So let's discuss the benefit of something like that. First, it standardizes the communication. It allows it to maintain security, for example, with regards to multicast. It also allows for scaled uh, deployments. It reduces maintenance overhead and facilitates complex applications such as firmware over the air updates. LoRaWAN multicast setup is a specification that is designed to address the need for a multicast. So in the normal scenario of a class A device, it's a unicast. Multicast, one device is sending to several other devices. And in this case, it would be the application server sending multiple commands to multiple nodes. So Taking a look at the remote multicast setup, we have some highlights that we want to mention. First of all, the default multicast control package if port field port is 200. It relies heavily on the multicast key encryption key, which is derived from the gen app key in LoRaWAN. 1.0 and app key in LoRaWAN 1.1. Also, the multicast key encrypted is sent over by the server using multicast group setup request. On the right hand side, we can see a summary of all the available commands using multicast control specifications. Below it, we can see the generation scheme of the keys. Multicast FOTA uses multicast group setup request and answer, and also uses multicast class session request and answer. This allows it to set up the request and also receive an answer from the device on the state of that request. The multicast class C session basically asks the end device to start a class C session in a specific time. And the answer provides a confirmation on the state of the session on the end device side. So the thing stack supports using class A and class B and class C. It also supports creating a multicast group device, which is a virtual activation by personalization device. Basically, this device is a multicast device that does not support uplinks, confirmed downlinks, or Mac commands. You can easily set up multicast device using the command line interface 
and running the command seen in the screen. You can also navigate to the documentation of Multicast to get an idea of how to route your downlink via the proper gateway ID. Multicast app session key is basically the app session key and multicast network session key maps to the session keys network session key. This is just a hint of how to use multicast using the things stack. Following that, we're going to showcase how we can use it in a photo environment. Jumping to another topic quite quickly is LoRaWAN fragmented data block transport. This allows basically to send fragments of a bigger data file to a specific end device, whether it's a unicast or multicast. The fragmentation control package on field port 201 allows you to basically fragment anything that is bigger than 1k bytes into multiple fragments and basically set up the session for that. The fragmentation is typically handled by the application server or any relevant integration that is built over the application server. So for example, MQTT or HTTP webhooks. In the case of FOTA, we mainly use fragmentation session setup request and answer. LoRaWAN application layer clock synchronization. One of the specification that is relevant is the clock synchronization package, which defaults at F port 202. This is typically sent only as a unicast message or a unicast command. It allows the server and the end device to synchronize their clocks. And this is critical for multicast applications. It allows it to get all end devices uh, to synchronize and basically start a class C session uh, together. This is critical for FOTA because we do not have two-way communication. So starting a class C session is, is basically something that we rely on the device to start on an absolute time. So clock synchronization is critical here. FOTA uses app time request and answer commands from the clock synchronization package. Yeah, so now that we had a brief overlook on the application layer messaging specifications, we now can build an, a, a bit of a complex application. One of the complex applications that you can build is firmware updates over the air using LoRaWAN. So let's try to understand what is needed here. On the server side, typically there is a photo server and this photo server has specific features within it that allows it to basically perform photo and communicate with multiple end devices. In the case of the thing stack, a class C downlink support already exists. A multicast device creation support also exists. An application server supporting MQTT or HTTP webhooks also exists. One final step that we are still implementing is the LoRaWAN multicast and fragmentation specification on the server side. And this will let, allow it to just basically be a plug and play for the server. For now, anyone can use the application server and build any integration of using MQTT and JavaScript, for example, 
to basically do the fragmentation and the multicast and the clock synchronization. On the device side, there is some basic requirements such as a secure bootloader, a class C context switch support, real-time clock support, LoRaWAN multicast and fragmentation specification device support, and persistent memory control APIs, allowing it basically to communicate with an internal or an external flash to maintain any received fragments. Looking at the basic blocks, you will see that we have the secure bootloader, which is the firmware update agent that checks if you have a valid new image and flashes it to the application layer. In our case, everything is supported with regards to multicast and the backend transport of LoRaWAN. The only missing piece is the fragmentation and the clock synchronization, which is currently being implemented. So we're going to showcase a demo here. The demo is going to be an end device, which is the generic node sensor edition, the earliest edition, using the things stack cloud v3. The end device update client is embed OS 5, LoRaWAN update client, and we are using a JavaScript prototyping script that, util that utilizes the thing Stack Cloud, MQTT integration over the application server. Let's jump and see how the demo goes. Okay, so in this demo, we can see that we have set up a photo application. In this photo application, we have one normal registered device using one or zero three lower one specifications and we have one registered multicast device using the things stack cloud uh, i'm highlighting here all the relevant points and on the right hand side we have the server that is written in javascript and it uses an mqtt client using the application server integration of the things stack Using all the highlighted points, you can fill all the configurations and then we can run the application server and see how it can handle the fragmentation and the multicast. So uh, in the blue background, we have the device log and on the black background, we have the server uh, side log. So on the left hand side, we can see the device booting up and uh, after it boot up it tried to initialize over the air activation afterwards uh, it sent a uh, clock synchronization message uh, and uh, on the server side it responded with proper clock synchronization so that is great afterwards uh, it tries to send a multicast group setup basically uh, sending the multicast encrypted key and uh, generating the session keys on the device side. Afterwards, we have sent the fragmentation session, session setup. It's 52 uh, fragments that need to be received by the device side. And afterwards, there is a request for a class C session and uh, the server checks that the delta of the clock is okay to start the class C transmissions over multicast. The device switches to a class C as you can see and then the server side is trying to transmit all 52 packets one by one 
and as you can see here we are accelerating the transmissions in order to observe so we have sent 72 messages because we have redundancy of 20 frames as you can see when the device received it it tried to verify that all the packages are correctly transmitted and properly signed and then it switches to a class A device and then it boots into the bootloader. The bootloader detects that there is a new image and afterwards it overrides the older image with a newer image and then it boots that image. That's it. Uh, I hope you found this demo useful and next up is the references. Here you will find all the references that were used in this presentation. Please feel free to use them and check them out to build a better firmware over their update or a better multicast support. Thank you for listening. It was my pleasure to provide you with a session on the basics of multicast and photo. Thanks a lot.